Welcome back to Monitors Unboxed for some of the most exciting content that we've ever made. Today, I'm talking about cables. Everyone needs cables in their life. They connect one thing to another thing, and that's really cool, I guess. Um, what more is there to say? I know you'll be super excited about this video on cables too. They're definitely not boring. You're definitely not gonna click away from this video. You'll watch it to the end, like and subscribe for sure. No, but seriously, this is an update on the situation with DisplayPort 2.1 cables, which is kind of an important thing now that more monitors are launching with proper DisplayPort 2.1 functionality. We also now have actual consumer GPUs supporting DisplayPort 2.1 UHBR20 in the NVIDIA GeForce 50 series, which isn't the best GPU generation we've seen, but it does pack some improvements for monitor enthusiasts. In the middle of last year, when the first DP2.1 UHBR20 monitor launched, the Gigabyte Aorus FO32U2P, it shipped with this cable, which is just a one meter mini display port to display port cable. For many setups, this sort of cable length is insufficient. It's just not gonna be long enough to reach from the monitor to your PC, especially if you put your PC under the desk. It's really only suitable for people that have their PC on top of their desk, right next to the monitor. The reason behind the inclusion of such a short DisplayPort cable back then was bandwidth requirements and VESA certification. DisplayPort 2.1 UHBR20 uses 80 gigabits per second of bandwidth, which means you need a cable capable of transmitting 80 gigabits per second of bandwidth. At the time, officially VESA certified 80 gigabits per second cables, aka DP80 certified cables, topped out at just 1.2 meters long, a mere 20 centimeters longer than the cable that Gigabyte supplied. And if you're either supplying a cable with a monitor or purchasing a cable yourself, you'd want to be sure it's actually going to work, which is why VESA certification to the DP80 standard is important. At the time, this put the DisplayPort 2.1 ecosystem in a bit of a conundrum. Either you use an officially certified cable that's guaranteed to work, but is very short, potentially too short, or you take a chance on a longer cable that's not certified to support 80 gigabits per second of bandwidth, which may not work at all. And with the significant increase in bandwidth from DisplayPort 1.4 at 32 gigabits per second to DisplayPort 2.1 at 80 gigabits per second, it's quite likely many longer DisplayPort 1.4 cables would fail when presented with a DisplayPort 2.1 UHBR20 monitor. The good news is that there have been significant advancements in cable technology since the middle of last year to now enable longer, officially DP80 certified DisplayPort 2.1 cables. And this is one of them right here. It is a two meter DP80 certified cable from Silkland. You can see when I unfurl it that it is much longer than the cable down there. It's actually extending out beyond the edges of the frame, but obviously this is a much more suitable cable length. Now Silkland, they're not sponsoring this video or anything. They did let me know about their new cable though, and they sent one of them out for testing. So yeah, here it is. Now two meters is much, much more usable than one meter. And even in some newer DP2.1 UHBR20 monitors, we're still getting one meter cables. For example, this is the DisplayPort cable that you get with the ASUS ROG Swift PG27 UCDM, and you get something very similar with the MSI MPG272 URX. It's a full DP to DP cable, so no mini connectors like with the Gigabyte monitor, you'll see the two proper connectors there but this is still too short for most setups. Whereas with Silkland's two meter cable, it enables you to use these new monitors over DisplayPort 2.1 at much more reasonable distances. And it is definitely a much thicker cable as well. Now I don't really have the tools to test cables properly and ensure they actually work at the bandwidth spec that's advertised. But what I can say about the Silkland S1334 two meter DP80 cable is that it worked perfectly when I hooked it up in a full DisplayPort 2.1 setup. On the GPU side, I used the new GeForce RTX 5090 with DP2.1 UHBR20 ports. And on the monitor side, I used the ASUS PG27 UCDM, which has a DP2.1 UHBR20 port. The two meter cable worked flawlessly at 4K 240Hz with display stream compression disabled in the monitor's OSD, forcing the full bandwidth to be used. On top of this, I confirm the cable is listed on the VESA website as DP80 certified. In contrast, I tried hooking up the monitor using a 1.8 meter DisplayPort 1.4 cable that was provided with an old ASUS monitor, this sort of cable that you would get here. This cable does work, but the RTX 5090 refuses to run the monitor at full 10-bit RGB at 240Hz. In fact, you can't even set it as an option. It forces you to use the limited YCBCR422 color format at 8 bits, aka 
it's using chroma subsampling. I also tried a couple of other options such as a 2 meter DP40 cable with DP16K branding, that's the lowest of the DisplayPort 2.1 specs, and it too forced chroma subsampling. It appears that RTX 5090 runs some sort of bandwidth check on the configuration to ensure the cable is good enough, and if the cable isn't sufficient, the display still works, but it forces chroma subsampling, which reduces visual quality. The only cables I got to work at full 10-bit RGB were certified DP80 cables, including the new 2-meter cable from Silkland. This is a pretty interesting way for NVIDIA to implement UHBR20 support, and I suspect a few people will be fooled into thinking a lower quality cable is working until they check the configuration the monitor is actually using. It does prevent situations where a display just flat out doesn't turn on with a low quality cable, and it should also prevent cable related connection artifacts from appearing. But if you want to use the full capabilities of your monitor's UHBR20 port at an actual 80 gigabits per second of bandwidth, based on my testing, a proper DP80 cable is required. I should note here that this testing was performed with DSC disabled on a DisplayPort 2.1 monitor. When you have DSC enabled and use a lower quality cable, instead of using Chroma subsampling, the configuration falls back to DisplayPort 1.4 with DSC enabled. So for most people, this isn't going to be an issue. It's just going to be for those configurations where you really want to use the DisplayPort 2.1 functionality. Now, Silkland aren't the only brand that is set to produce 2 meter DP80 cables in 2025. Other listings have popped up on the VESA website from brands like Chang Yang Electronics Company and Cable Matters. I haven't seen any lengths greater than 2 meters yet, but having multiple options is certainly nice. One of the pleasant surprises with this situation is that longer DP80 cables are not that outrageously expensive. The Silkland 2 meter cable I used in this video, which comes like this, has an MSRP of $24 US, but with a coupon you can get it for more like $20. In contrast, Silkland's 1 meter DP80 cable is $13, and their 2 meter DP40 cable and DP1.4 cables are about $10. So it is double the price to go from DP40 to DP80 bandwidth, and a little over 50% more to go from a 1 meter to 2 meter length at the same DP80 bandwidth. But I feel like getting a certified DP80 2 meter cable for $20 is still pretty reasonable. The Cable Matters DP80 2 meter cable, certified as seen on the VESA website, is also now available and it's priced at just $16 US. I've got no idea whether the $4 difference between Cable Matters and Silkland is justified, but Cable Matters is a bit cheaper. Within the Cable Matters product family, again, it's about double the price to go from a 2 meter DP1.4 cable to a 2 meter DP80 cable. I'm not trying to sell you on a cable. I don't really care which brand that you buy from. All I can say is I've used the Silkland cable and it works fine. And I'll chuck some links to various options in the description. One thing I will say though, is that it's essential that you check the VESA website before buying a DisplayPort 2.1 cable. If you want to be sure the cable you're buying is legitimate, and certified to support the advertised bandwidth. This was a big issue that I brought up in the previous video in the middle of last year. Brands were claiming cables were VESA certified and could support 80 gigabits per second of DisplayPort bandwidth, but they weren't actually officially VESA certified DP80 cables when we checked the VESA website. Some were VESA certified, just certified at a lower bandwidth spec then the manufacturer was claiming a higher bandwidth spec on the product page. This was a hugely misleading mess for people looking to buy a longer cable after receiving just a one meter cable with their monitor. Silkland, they were actually one of the brands I called out for this misleading advertising, and to their credit, they were the only company to reach out and say that they were taking my feedback on board and are adjusting their marketing to be accurate. I've since checked their listings and have confirmed they are updated with DP80 and DP40 cables listed as such. A couple of other things to mention at the end of this video. Firstly, Silkland also have a 3 meter DP54 cable available now. DP54 is the spec down from DP80, supporting 54 gigabits per second of bandwidth for monitors that use DisplayPort 2.1 UHBR 13.5. As the bandwidth requirements are lower than DP80, DP54 cables can be a bit longer, so 3 meters here is possible. However, I tested this cable with the PG27 UCDM using a UHBR20 configuration, and like with other non-DP80 cables, you're forced to use chroma subsampling. Unfortunately, you can't just get a longer DP54 cable and hope for the best that it might work. DP80 is still required to utilize the full spec. That said, this should work fine with actual UHBR 13.5 configurations, and of course, anything lower than that too, like DisplayPort 1.4.
Also, I can confirm that you don't actually have to use DisplayPort 2.1 UHBR20 to enjoy full feature compatibility on the latest GeForce 50 series GPUs. When using a DisplayPort 1.4 configuration with DSC to access 4K 240Hz, the RTX 5090 still gives you access to features like DSR, DLDSR, and image scaling. So on these new monitors with new GPUs, it doesn't really matter whether you use the DP2.1 or DP1.4 configuration as there are no limitations. In contrast with previous generation NVIDIA GPUs, accessing 4K 240Hz over DP1.4 with DSC would lock you out of accessing DSR, DLDSR, and image scaling. This is because that particular configuration would exceed the single display head limit of the GPU. It actually had nothing to do with DSC specifically, it was just that most configurations that required DSC over DP1.4 happened to require a pixel rate that exceeded the single display head limit. In those situations, multiple display heads would be combined, and some functionality would then become unsupported. The GeForce 50 series doubles the maximum pixel rate of the display head, so many more configurations now fit within a single head with full feature support. This includes 4K 240Hz, whether you use DP1.4 with DSC, or DP2.1 UHBR20 without DSC. This shouldn't be an issue for any display where the bandwidth fits inside DisplayPort 2.1 UHBR20, as NVIDIA designed this new display engine to handle this. That's pretty much it for this video. With the new cable lengths available from brands like Silkland and Cable Matters and the updates to the GeForce 50 series display engine, DisplayPort 2.1 is now very usable in a normal configuration. Hopefully over time we see even longer cable lengths, that certainly should be possible through active cables with the new DisplayPort 2.1 B spec, but for now, 2 meters is a good position to be in. Great news for those planning on buying one of the many DisplayPort 2.1 UHBR20 monitors that are launching in 2025. But like I said earlier in this video, you don't really need a DisplayPort 2.1 monitor, and I still don't believe it's really a major consideration if you're tossing up between two products, one that's only DisplayPort 1.4 and one that's DisplayPort 2.1. If you do buy one of these new GPUs that has full DisplayPort 2.1 functionality, like the GeForce 50 series, you're getting full functionality whether you use DP2.1 or DP1.4 with DSC. It really makes no difference. So for most people, given that there's no real image quality difference or any latency differences or anything between DP2.1 and DP1.4, it's really not something that is going to be a significant factor. Now, I guess it is still better to buy a monitor with DisplayPort 2.1. So if that is a feature that is not costing you anything additional, then yeah, get the product with DisplayPort 2.1. If it is a price premium to just buy DisplayPort 2.1, it's probably not something that I would consider. I don't think it really is going to add too much to the experience for most buyers. Uh, but yeah, that's the situation with DisplayPort 2.1. Now we actually have suitable cables that can be used. And even if you don't end up you know, using the DisplayPort 2.1 functionality, a DP80 cable is basically the best cable you can get. So this should really work in any sort of situation. And that's the case with most VASA certified cables. I've really had no issues using VASA certified cables. If you're having any cable related issues using a dodgy cheap cable, try finding something that is VASA certified. You're pretty much guaranteed that they will work. So. Yeah, that's it for this one. If you appreciate the testing that we do here at Monitors Unboxed and following up things like DisplayPort 2.1 cables, then please consider subscribing and also supporting us directly via our Patreon page. Links to that is in the description below. Anyway, that's it for this one. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.